Israel Expo 73 began as a dream more than a year ago. I had read about such an exhibit in a congregation in New Jersey, and it seemed just right for our congregation, which has such a deep uh, reservoir of talent and enthusiasm uh, for this kind of project. It seemed a wonderful way, too, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the State of Israel, uh, to bring together under one roof the uh, products of 25 years of history, the art and the architecture and the agriculture, uh, the music and the medicine, uh, the produce, and all of the wonderful uh, products of Israel's work. Our purpose was very simple, to create a warm climate for Israel among the population of this area of Texas, and perhaps to create a potential market for Israeli goods. I took the idea to the board in 1972, early in the spring, and they were, they were enthused. Then when we found Jackie and Bitsy Prohler to be our chairman, things really began to move. We met, we dreamed dreams, we planned plans, we made projects, and we began to gather the people with whom to do it. We asked for volunteers and scores. Hundreds volunteered. Volunteer architects designed the little street in Jerusalem that was to be our centerpiece, the Wailing Wall, the arches of an Arab city. Uh, we uh, volunteers came and hammered it together. Uh, volunteers uh, became uh, st storekeepers and assembled the stock. Uh, they brought together the talents of the congregation, singers and dancers, who would augment the professional Israeli entertainment that we had coming. All in all, it was a job of hundreds of volunteers, uh, dedicated to the purpose and to the cause and produced in about a year's time uh, this uh, magnificent uh, occasion. So take my hand and let us walk this land. They took our hand by the tens of thousands, Jews and non-Jews alike. They came as individuals in their cars. Rice University loaned us a parking lot. They came as groups in chartered buses, from churches and from schools, from near and far, from suburbs on the edge of the city and cities a hundred miles away. Sometimes the building was so full we had to close the doors for a time. Altogether, some 35,000 people saw our land. Coming down the Jordan River. You yes, they saw our land. Near the entrance was a bas relief of Israel in the Sinai Peninsula. A guide was on duty every hour of the day with ready explanations and an answer to questions. We told our visitors about the land, its geography and its climate, its farms and forests and deserts, its natural resources and its habitations, its people and its institutions, and even its geopolitical position in the Near East. Our visitors then had a chance to get below the surface of our land with this schematic representation of an archaeological dig. Or an archaeological dig showing how one civilization might be built upon the ruins of a previous one. Each piece shown here is a replica of an actual artifact found in archaeological digs in Israel. Each tells the story of the life and times of a particular period in biblical history. If there's any questions about any of the artifacts that you'd like to know, if you'd like to know the story behind them, we'll gladly tell you. The most dramatic feature of Expo was a replica of the wall. So realistic that one visitor asked how we managed to bring in the stones. The Western Wall is all that remains of the Western Wall of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Jews have come to the wall for centuries to mourn the destruction of the temple in 70 CE by the Romans and Israel's subsequent exile. Thus, it also became known as the Wailing Wall. And alongside this, we turned our whole social hall into a souk in Old Jerusalem, complete with arches, minaret, and bazaars. There was a continuous showing of the Chagall windows, which picture the symbols of the ancient 12 tribes. Let me tell you that this remarkable reproduction of a Jerusalem scene was designed by architects of our congregation its parts were built over a period of months by a number of volunteers, and only at the end did we call in professional assistants to assemble the parts. Walk with us down these streets and alleys into little shops and large bazaars. Here is our gift shop. It is one of the many bazaars that were in Expo. 
Altogether, we had on hand a quarter of a million dollars worth of Israeli products of all sorts. Here, we sold jewelry, knick-knacks, souvenirs, for women, for men, for children. And not much of it had to be returned. Our purpose of creating a market for Israeli goods was one we believe we achieved. We also had set up a huge tent outside the temple, you won't be seeing it, but there we served lunch, snacks, and dinner all day and evening. Here too, as everywhere, volunteers manned every shop and every showcase, every counter and every cash register for long, exhausting hours. The dress shop was a beautiful display with some skillful products of Israeli couturiers. Volunteers served as both models and sales ladies, and many an Israel dress or blouse was taken home by visitors to Expo. The record shop, too, was a busy place. Here we sold the music of Israel, a great deal of it. The recording of artists, including those of our guest performers, Geula Gil and Yaakov Dan. It's my great pleasure to present to you an exciting entertainer direct from Israel, Mr. Yaakov Dan. Shalom. <laughs> the chairman of our expo, Mr. and Mrs. Proler, without Jackie and Bitsy, and Ed Heck next to them, who was the executive chairman, we could never have had an expo. Thank you very much. El Al, the Israeli airline, was most cooperative and sent a display and a hostess to our expo. We also had continuous movies of Israel's landscapes. This is a display that Dewey Compton provided. He is the agro-business editor of radio station KTRH in Houston. We arranged for him to visit Israel, tour its farms, its dairies, its water sources, and bring back this exhibit and much more. Dewey lectured every day to a full house, more than 750 people every lecture. As the old saying goes in the Bible, that they'll beat their, their swords in the plowshare is really coming true once again. Because of the Israeli know-how in agriculture, this is becoming the thing that is plying the peace to the Arab neighbors to the east, south, and north. And the knowledge that the Israeli farmers can impart to that thirsty desert land will be the thing that will turn the key in the lock to future security of the Israeli people and the Middle East. This is the Super Saw, a grocery and a market in which we offered a variety of Israeli packaged and canned goods. More than a hundred crates of Jaffa oranges were taken home by our visitors. We also showed a full line of Israeli wines and liqueurs. As a matter of fact, we sold more Sabra in one week than had been sold in the whole Southwest in a year. A unique display at Expo was that of the Franciscan custody of the Holy Land. At the invitation of the Israeli government, Brother Joseph brought us a beautiful presentation of the handwork of Arab Christians and the Franciscan program of social service all over Israel. This is probably one of the finest pieces of pearl carving that came out of Bethlehem. It's a mother pearl game table. If you notice closely the fine work that is done in it, the tools that are used to do this type of carving are very crude as you see here. They take the mother of pearl shell, which is a very fine white pearl, and carve out the pieces that they can use for inlay. The table can be used for chess. This is your chess board here. You place your figures, of course, there. And you have, uh, as well, a card table. When you flap it back that way, play what you wish on it. And opening it all the way up, you, have, you can look in there and see the fine work that's in the backgammon section of the game. Now this uh, was done in Bethlehem about 50-some years ago, and it's uh, 
on permanent exhibit at the Francisco Monastery Israeli Arts and Crafts Museum in our, back in Washington, D.C. Another major feature was our art exhibit, large and colorful, with more material on hand than we could show at one time. We had an artist in residence, Yonkel Ginsberg, and David Rubovitz was here to represent the artists of Ain Hode. There were oils and graphics, watercolors and ceramics, posters, and tapestries, and banners. We showed works by every well-known artist of Israel, by Ratner, Janko, Ardon, Weintraub, Agam, Shraga Weil, and Sharir, Ruben and Raphaeli, and many, many more. As works were sold, we brought out replacements, and many a Houston home is more beautiful today because so much was offered to see and to buy. Ah, listen to our children. Actually, this was only one of three choral groups, this is the youngest, and three dance groups who performed again and again during the week on the stage of the art gallery, on the stage of our sanctuary auditorium, and also in the Café Shalom. The songs they sang were many. This one sings to the future. Bashana Haba'a. You will see just how good it will be in the year that will come. In the years that will come, we shall remember Expo as one of the great experiences of our temple life. Take our hand and see this land. Oh, my God. 